Hi guys, it's with me, it's Warhammer Tactics Series, and today I want to discuss Tau Empire. So it's 9th edition and you're looking to start a new army. Perhaps it's your first in the 40k universe, or you've been in this hobby for a while and you're planning an addition to your substantial collection. Anyhow, if you need to know how to start collecting the blue skin communists of the far future, this video is for you. But what's so special about Tau anyways? Why would you want to start collecting them in the first place? And my answer to that would be they are an army with an absolutely unique playstyle. They are the masters of the shooting phase. They only know how to do one thing in their lives, but they do that thing perfectly. It's eliminating their foes from afar. They're also an army with a lot of very fast models nowadays. They were used to be this castle force that sat in their deployment zone trying to just kill anything that goes into the range of their guns. But nowadays they are more of a dynamic army and they need to move throughout the board to capture objectives and to get into range with their shorter ranged guns. So yeah, they're fast, they're very good at shooting and they are relatively durable with the ability to allocate some of the damage that their main assets suffer to the drones, use some stratagems to nullify the damage altogether and so on. Tau models, Tau selection of miniatures is one of the best in my opinion in the 40k universe and again a unique one. They look futuristic, they don't look that grim dark to me and it's something I know many people really like to see in the 40k universe. So if you want to run an army that has that sort of cyberpunk feeling to it but still play the 40k game, the game that we all love and adore, they are the army for you. Tao Codex is one of the best written books that Games Workshop have produced in my opinion in the recent years. It has a lot of stuff in there and you can build a multitude of different army compositions that all can be strong. Of course some will be stronger than the others but you can play with a lot of different styles of armies and that's something that i think is very important for the longevity of a codex a great selection of strats uh, prototype systems to build your force around relics and etc another thing about tau that is great is that they are a beginner friendly army in terms of painting and assembling and especially painting uh, they and necrons are probably the two armies that you need to look at if you are unsure of your painting skills but first of all i want to say that you shouldn't be afraid to start there is a lot of leeway there uh, a lot of room for experimentation and at the end if you do your best you'll probably have something that you can be proud to put on the tabletop because at the end of the day probably the only thing that matters is that you are happy with your army it's the most important thing because it's your army however if you are willing to go that extra step further to make your army something unique and special they also have room for that and they can accommodate all those experiments that you can do with them or with the models themselves or with the paint schemes and the last but not least is the Tao lore. I think the Tao lore is one of the best parts of the 40k history that we have access to nowadays. One of the most well written fluffs out there. And if you like to read about your army, if you like to dive deeper into the emotions and the reasons behind the things that your uh, forces like to do on the battlefield, they are a perfect army for that. So now when we know why the Tao are a great army to start collecting, let's talk about the and most efficient ways to do so. And the first things first, of course, we're going to talk about the Combat Patrol Tau Empire. As the Combat Patrols do, it costs $140 and it contains one XV-95 Ghost Kill Battle Suit, one 10-man Strike Team, one a Stealth Suit XV-25 Team, one Ethereal on a Hover Drone and a Cadre Fireblade. So let's quickly run through the units. XV-95 Ghost Skill Battle Suit, not a bad choice, however the XV-8 Crisis Teams and the Storm Surge and the Hammerheads, they are all better than the Ghost Skill. 
there are some uses for it of course but probably you are better off spending those points on your crisis teams your infantry your devil fish and stuff like that my biggest complaint about the ghost kill is that it lacks the invulnerable save so it's relatively easy to deal with it even though the toughness is now the toughness 7 with it and it still has the minus one to hit so it has a lot of things going for it but the lack of the invulnerable save is too big of a hit in my opinion now the 10-man strike team they are a staple of the tau armies they were always the backbone of any tau force and i'm happy to say that the strike teams are a great choice you can build the breachers out of this uh, kit and they are great you can build the regular fire warriors with the pulse rifles and they are also great so we need those three troops for our battalion and the strike teams are probably the best things to put in this slot so a worthy addition to the combat patrol the xv25 stealth suits they are great they can infiltrate and you can pump out a lot of shots with those burst cannons and the fusion blaster they are very survivable with their one up save and cover and minus one to hit both in combat and from ranged weapons so yeah great addition to the combat patrol no matter what sapped or list you are going for they are probably going to be a great part of that ethereal and hover drone they are great now they only cost 60 points and for that you get basically a chaplain like the chaplain of the space marines that can apply a very nice set of buffs to your models they know two uh litanies or recitations incantations whatever uh each and you can recite one per turn or two if you take the humble stave relic and this relic also allows you to recite those incantations on a roll of two plus instead of a three plus so it makes it uh, almost an auto take relic if you run an ethereal in your army and those buffs can be five up strike for your core unit so a unit of crisis team uh battle suits now have suddenly a five up strike which is incredible for their survivability or minus one to hit if they, if they did not remain stationary in your movement phase or plus one command point so yeah i recommend having ethereal in your army and having that in your combat patrol is great and the cutter fireblade he's a great hq he costs only 50 points and for that you get a character that can apply a marker light uh, he can take the awesome uh, lantern relic that basically allows you to roll five extra d6 and apply five extra uh, maximum marker lights to the targets that you've chosen so it's a great uh, way to make your marker lights more reliable which is very important for tau obviously he also provides a great aura of uh, sixes to hit with pul pulse weapons on core units generate extra hits which is great and he can also in your command phase select one fire warrior team and give them reroll once to hit so again great character great addition to your army worthy of a combat patrol so over Overall, the Tower Combat Patrol feels like a good deal. Uh, the worst thing here probably being the Ghost Kill, and it's still not a bad unit, maybe just not the most competitive and efficient one. Now let's move to the latest Tower Empire Battle Force Star Pulse Cadre, uh, which was released in the winter of 2020. You can still find it on eBay for around $200, and I think it's a great box to start your army, so let's discuss the contents in more detail first of all the 10-man strike team which is again a great addition all the prices for the boxes if you were to buy them from games workshop separately are in the orange font to the right of the names of the units next is the 10-man pathfinder team again they are great one of the most reliable ways to apply a lot of marker lights to a lot of different targets with their ability to do that at the end of the movement phase rather than the start still don't like their five up uh, save but they have some ways to go around that for example with a stratagem that allows them to make a normal move after finishing the fire marker lights action so basically they can move out from cover shoot the marker lights and move back in next are a staple of most of the competitive lists that we are gonna see in tournaments nowadays the xv8 crisis battle suits three of them here in the battle force they are an incredible elites choice they are fast they are durable they have an incredible selection of weapons that you can 
uh, tailored to any needs, whether to get rid of hordes or elite infantry or maybe some tougher vehicles and monsters. Plus they are core, so most of the buffs that are in this army work on them as well. They can also jump, shoot and jump, so you can punish some opponents that try to uh, engage them in close combat. You can just move into distance, shoot your weapons and hide behind cover and behind the range of their charges. This battle force also contains one X V88 broadside battle suit, which is again one of the best models nowadays to purchase for your Tau army because it's a great weapons platform. Again, has the core keyword, and they are infantry now, so they can use the terrain to their benefit, giving them one up safe in cover, making them extremely hard to shift, especially if you apply some buffs like the five up track from the ethereal to them as well and have some drones flying around they're also surprisingly relatively cheap only 75 points for a model with a heavy rail rifle and i think it's a, the best choice they are much better than the high yield missile pods with their damage too which is obviously not that great in the meta nowadays when all the things that you actually need to kill have minus one damage most in most of the times plus the heavy rail rifle has this awesome rule that each time a successful wound roll is made with this weapon and each of the rail rifles have, makes two shots so we have two chances to do, to do that uh if you wound the target successfully you automatically deal a mortal wound in addition to all the damage which is awesome now the piranha i don't know if you would want to use that in your army it's probably the weakest part of this battle force they aren't bad they cost only 60 points for this model but they have the problem of no uh, close to no survivability no invulnerable save and uh, I'm pretty sure that the only great way to use them is to score the engage for you because they are vehicles, so you only need one model to score engage with them. And probably that's the best part about the Piranhas. And their fusion blaster is okay, especially if you are running them uh, with Tau uh, Sept, so you have that in, in built reroll, so the fusion blaster is more reliable. And the last but definitely not least here is the Tau Empire Commander. You get the full box so you can build the Enforcer or the Cold Star, whichever one you want. They're both great nowadays. I'm uh, gravitating more towards the Enforcer because I like the survivability of this model with its minus one damage and two up save, but there are also some ways you can use the Cold Star as well. Commanders are now your buff center they provide the real ones to hit for your core units you can give them a lot of those sweet prototype weapon systems that can debuff enemy units and they're generally a great addition to your army as well as a great way to help your crisis teams because for example enforcer commander allows them to have opsec the cold star commander gives them an 18 inch uh, advance and the xv8 commander which this one isn't but I'm still going to mention it. It gives them tactical acumen, which is basically ignoring all, all penalties to hit and being able to fall back and shoot and charge. So overall, I think that the Star Pulse Cater, even though the total value, the difference between the price that you pay for the box itself and the total price of the models here is not as huge as in the Tau Patrol, I'm pretty sure that this box is what you really want. And if you can get your hands on it, I really recommend it because it would be an awesome start for your new Tau Empire army. Now, say you have already acquired these two boxes or you have your own starting collection and you're looking for something to add to it to expand your force. Here are the units that I think you should have in your army in order for it to be competitive at the moment. First of all, an additional 10-man strike team. You simply can't have too many fire warriors running around the board as a Tau player, in my opinion. Plus, some of those boxes will be used as breachers and some of them will be used as regular 
or fire warriors so yeah there is an incentive to have more of those boxes you also need two additional x388 broadsides battle suits because you need to have at least one full three-man squad of those because they are extremely efficient and they're also great looking models and if you spend some time magnetizing them you can even have both of the loadouts ready to be used which i would probably recommend doing if you are willing to spend some extra time on the assembly line i also recommend to have extra two devil fish for your force because they those are first of all a staple of tau armies fish of fury is one of the things that all tau players remember with the warmth in their hearts and i think it's a great tactic to play and nowadays when devilfish are still one of the best transports in the game they are very cheap durable and they have that incredible pre-game move that allows them to be much faster than even their regular already impressive 12 inch move they also have fly keyword and there are stratagems that allow your fire warriors to disembark after the transport has moved so the amount of mobility that you get in your tower army with this transport is incredible and you need that in ninth edition to gain control of the all important objectives the storm surge even though this model looks strange for some people and i get that it has no arms a giant cannon on his shoulder it would probably look much better if it had this gun in his hands like the broadsides do but in terms of rules this model is awesome now toughness a 22 wounds four up and one an incredible amount of firepower coming from just one thing and a great price tag of around 340 points depending on the upgrades that you choose. Now the Hammerhead or the Skyrim Gunship. They are both great uh, for different things. The Hammerhead is more against monsters and vehicles and the Skyrim Gunship has a more universal weapons profile. But they both provide some marker light support. They both can mount the Accelerator Burst Cannon which is a great weapon and also comes with a devilfish with eight shots at strength six ap1 damage one it's incredible and the smart missile systems to punish some infantry that is sitting behind the obscuring terrain the only problem with the hammerheads or skyray gunships is their survivability they have no access to invulnerable saves and the best thing you can do for them is select a sept that provides at least some help to them like borkan with the minus one strength for weapons with strength seven and lower all this to say a sept with the dense cover for vehicles when the attacker is more than 18 inches away but what else what else can we buy for the Tau when we want to expand our collection even further and here are my answers first of all the infamous riptide why i have not included it in the previous sections there are two reasons first of all it's a very expensive model uh, money wise you will have to pay 110 dollars for a single model when you can pay 170 for the lord of war storm surge that will feel a much more important role in your army providing all sorts of firepower and not just like one or two guns like the riptide does and the second reason is a simple one there are a lot of models that are much better for the price than the riptide so if you don't have this model yet in your collection you are much better off spending your money and your points in your rosters elsewhere However, if you like this model visually, and I think it's a stunning piece of Tau history, and if you maybe if you already have it in your collection, it's a great way to have some of your opponent's attention away from your main units. For example, your broadsides, your XV8 crisis teams, your storm surge, and etc. So as a future step for your collection, Riptide is definitely not a bad choice. Again, an additional Hammerhead or Sky Skyray gunship. There are a lot of ways you can use those and having one in your heavy support is great but having two or maybe having one lone strike in your hq and one hammerhead in your heavy support is very nice and it allows you to experiment more with your lists and your builds of course an additional x v crisis team you will probably already have three of those from the star pulse cater battle force if you have bought it but having five or six of them is even better because you will be able to apply buffs more 
efficiently than on a three-man unit. Of course, both the jump, shoot, jump, strike and fade stratagem and the drop side acquisition strat both cost more when you use it on a bigger unit, but they are definitely worth it, especially the strike and fade, because it only gets more expensive when you use it on a unit that contains more than five models. So if you run a unit of five XV8s, you don't have to pay that extra tax. The Crutes, they are your cheapest troops. They have a pre-game 7-inch move. They have a move characteristic of 7 inches, so they can get to those objectives fast. They, of course, will die to a stiff breeze with their 6-up uh, save and toughness 3, but they are still not bad because they are so cheap. Of course, I like the Fire Warriors much more with their 4-up save, their pulse rifles, but there are some rosters in some games where you would want to have that dirt cheap unit on the objective and have those extra 20 points in your pocket. So, Crutes are great for your collection in the future. And for the HQs, the Commander, Shadow Sun and Dark Strider are two of the best HQ characters that you can have for the Tau Sept. They are both great. Commander Shadow Sun is one of the best commander units that you can buy for the points. Uh, she can give a core unit uh, the chapter master style reroll, so full rerolls to hit, and has great survivability, good weapons, so she's overall a great character. And Dark Strider is also awesome because he can carry he carries a marker light, he can apply a buff of plus one to wound for to any core unit of your choice. So for example, plus one to wound on your unit of crisis teams. Just He just needs to point at an enemy unit that is visible to him. So great character again overall. And the commander far side. He is a great commander for your far side enclaves if you are going to be experimenting with them. And they're one of the better septs out there. So you might want to do that. He's great in combat with five attacks at strength 10, AP 3 and damage 3 and weapon skill 2 plus, which is incredible for Tao with their regular regular weapon skill 5 up. He also gives a buff which is called, a very funny name, Way of the Short Blade. At the start of the fight phase you can select one fire sight and clave score unit within 6 and they get plus 1 to hit in melee. Not very important for the uh, crisis teams I think because they don't have any melee weapons and with AP 0 on their hands I'm not sure they will do anything in combat even hitting on fours instead of fives. But he still provides the tactical acumen as uh, an XV8 commander and the master of war rerolls one to hit, so he's not a bad choice if you're going to be running the far side enclaves. And the last thing I want to mention is the world of the alternative 40k models. There are a lot of people designing those models for us and they look stunning usually and uh, sometimes they even look better than the original Games Workshop builds. If you have access to the 3D printers or you can ask someone to do that, it will probably cost less than the originals. You can have a unique looking army that no one will have in your area, probably most likely. You will have less problems with WYSIWYG because you can just have all the weapons you need instead of relying on those that are in the box and Games Workshop are famous for not including as many weapons as we need in the in the box sets and there are a lot of ways to make your character stand out so i really like the idea of having a part or maybe the full army of alternative models for 40k and if you are into that sort of thing i recommend to check it out on the internet there are a lot of companies and individuals that produce that sort of product for us and for our 40k needs so that's it guys i hope this video was useful for you if you have any questions please let me know in the comments below and good luck with your new tau empire army i'll see you next time